Okay, so we're in an emergency situation. We've got lost, we've got stranded. We're gonna have to wait for someone to come and find us. We've left a very good game plan. Everybody knows exactly where we should be, but we don't know exactly where we are. Maybe we've twisted an ankle a little bit and we just can't get out before nightfall. So we're stuck here. What items do we have in our pack and what can we do to make ourselves visible and make ourselves comfortable, control our body's core temperature and create a microclimate which is what's important to understand is to create a microclimate and hydrate ourselves to avoid the effects of hyperthermia or hypothermia. Stay with us, we're gonna have a look at that right now. Okay, first things first. First thing I wanna do is, if I know I'm lost and I'm hoping someone's gonna come looking for me or I want somebody who just happens to wander by to notice me, the first thing I need to do is contrast with the local environment. Many of us make the mistake of wearing drab clothing into the woods because we don't really want to be seen. We don't want to be noticed. We don't want to leave a large footprint. When you're in a situation that you need to be found, you need to leave a footprint. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull a bright orange shirt of some kind that I've got stashed in my pack, out of my pack, and I'm going to put that on. Now I'm visible to anyone who might be around or looking for me. Okay, as you can see, we've just got a small day pack here, and this contains enough emergency gear in it with plenty of room left over for me to put snack items and things of that nature, a GPS if I wanted to carry one, spare clothing, extra outerwear, any of those things. What I have in this kit now is only what I consider necessities for an emergency situation. So understand that on top of this, you would carry other things because part of microclimate control is understanding that your first layer of defense against the elements is the clothes on your back. You should always be dressed and prepared for any environmental changes for the seasonality and the geographical location that you are in. The keys to microclimate control are understanding the triangle of microclimate control as we teach at the Pathfinder system, which is the three ways or the three sides of that triangle that control your body's core temperature that you gain or lose heat. And that is microclimate control, conduction, convection, and radiation. So we need to be able to control those three elements either in our favor or to our advantage, however you want to put that, so that we can not lose body heat or so that we can cool down in a hot environment or gain heat in a cold weather environment. What we're gonna talk about today is not a really, really cold weather environment. We're gonna talk about a shelter that you can set up spring, summer, fall, three seasons, that will help you to maintain your body's core temperature and effectively make a microclimate that can be seen from a long distance. So if we unpack our pack for a minute, because we always keep our shelter element at the bottom, out of the way because hopefully it's the last thing we're going to need and we'll discuss all of these items as we go that we have in our pack our shelter element consists of a bright orange emergency reflective reusable space blanket we carry several stakes so that we don't have to waste time and energy looking for these things and they can also be used multifunctionally as toggles we have a heavy three mil garbage can liner in here or drum liner that we can use for a moisture barrier on the ground. We can stuff it with leaves to make a sleeping bag or sleeping pad, or we can use it for rain gear if we need to. And then we have a couple different elements of cordage in this pack that we can use to help us set up this microclimate. And cordage is an important thing to understand that you're gonna need and it's one of the five C's of survivability. So that basically makes our microclimate that we need if we're going to have to stick it out for a night or two before we can get out. We also have a micro fleece queen size blanket that we can use in the summer, winter or fall. And then of course we should have the clothing on our back and the clothing in our pack which includes outerwear. So this is our shelter. Let's get this set up. Stay with me. Okay. So the first element of my shelter kit is just a piece of cordage. I prefer orange for everything I can get emergency wise. And it's 25 approximately feet long and it's a piece of paracord and it has two loops tied in the end with just an overhand knot. I'll show you the advantage of those loops as we go through this. The first loop, we're just gonna pull all of our line through and it's gonna create a slip knot so that when we pull this over to our other tree, effectively creating a ridge line, which keeps us from having to cut anything that supports our shelter. I like mine about waist high, and we'll go to the other tree and tie the other knot. Okay, when we get to our other tree, we're simply going to 
wrap our line all the way around the tree. Again, I like to start about waist level and I can adjust that height to adjust the pitch of my shelter, whether I want to lose heat or gain heat or keep convection or reduce convection within my shelter if I have a fire in front of it or to reduce or increase the amount of breeze coming through my shelter and how much heat I hold in or let out by raising and lowering this pitch. The higher it is, the more heat it's going to release. The lower it is, the less heat it's going to release. Then I'm going to pick a spot about a foot and a half out from that shelter and I'm going to tie a very simple knot where I just turn a loop over in the line and pull it through creating a slip knot like this that I can pull against as a pulley but will come out very easily. And once I get my line through that knot, I can then use that like a pulley to tension or tighten my line. At that point, I'm going to tie a very simple trucker's hitch by pinching this off, throwing all of the line over the top, just like this, pulling a small loop toward me and grabbing the line through it and pulling that loop tight. And what that does is that tensions all of that up. And we're going to use this loop to our advantage in just a minute. And we can take the excess line if we want to, and we can wrap it up for now. We may use it later for something else, but for now we'll just wrap it up. We'll turn a couple of half hitches over the top of it to keep it in a neat coil so we're not tripping over it in the middle of the night. Just like that. Okay, so now we have a simple and effective ridge line. Now what we're going to do with this tarp, and this tarp is five feet by seven feet and you can see it's very very bright orange which gives us a five foot by seven signaling device looking up into the canopy we have a fairly clear area that if helicopters were coming over looking for us they would definitely see this also somebody walking through the woods along this path is going to see this because it's very large we're going to take one of the corners in a diagonal direction and we're going to take this loop and we're going to simply put it through this corner and this gives us a little more versatility with our tarp. And I'm going to slide a stake in that and then pull that cinch knot down tight. And what that's going to give me is a solid spot for the shelter to begin with. Okay, so now I have the front corner of my tarp set up. I have other cordage with me. And I always want to carry a good cutting tool with me. This one happens to be a Mora 840MG high carbon steel cutting knife. I have my belt knife as well, but I could put this knife in my pack as a backup, or maybe I'm only carrying a pocket style knife on my day hike or whatever, but I want a good fixed blade knife. This is a very inexpensive fixed blade knife that holds a very good edge. It has a sail needle taped to it, which is one of the 10 C's of survivability that we'll talk about during this DVD. But a good cutting tool is really your number one device that you need to carry with you. So we're gonna use our cutting tool now to cut some cordage. And all we're gonna do is cut several pieces about a foot long. We're going to cut three of them. One, two, three. We'll set our cordage to the side, put our knife in the sheath, and all we're going to do is tie these with an overhand knot so that we've created a loop in all three of these very quickly. And we will use these lines to stake the corners of our tarp down.
Okay, at this point we have effectively created a microclimate. Now, what we need to do is something on the ground. We can put our micro fleece blanket on the ground. If we're afraid it's going to rain or the ground is damp, we can use our trash bag as a moisture barrier. But we need to avoid conduction if it's cold weather. In warm weather, it's not that big of a deal. It's just going to be an uncomfortable night on the hard ground. In cold weather, we need about four inches of insulation that's compressed, which means we need some debris and leaf matter in here. For this demonstration, in three season weather, you're not going to be too bad off. You can use your trash bag if it's wet for a moisture barrier. You've got your micro fleece blanket. You can put those inside and be fairly comfortable. You've got a reflective surface inside here, so if your fire is out here or on this side, it will bring heat in and cause convective heating. If you're afraid that you're going to overheat, or you're trying to create a microclimate of shade only, you would set this tarp up in a different configuration and you would flip it the other direction to reflect the sun off of you. But for good signaling with this orange side out, you have a big advantage. Okay, to change this shelter from a diamond wedge plow point configuration into more of a lean-to that will give you more breeze flow and give you convective cooling, all we need to do is pull this corner out, which means all we have to do is draw our stake out, and it comes out very easily. Lay our tarp in the diagonal fashion, or the rectangle fashion. Adjust our loop out, and put it through the corner directly across the rectangle side, put our stake back in, and pull it down. We can then come over here with one of our other stakes to the front, like this, and you can see that now we have the rectangle side across. And if we take one of our loops and make a prussic out of it, by passing the knot over the line through a loop three times, we then have what's called a prussic style knot, which is a self-tightening type knot. We can then use part of that loop again through our stake by placing it through the grommet hole and I'm doubling this over when I put it through the grommet hole because I've got that knot there to catch it. Slide my stake through it and then pull this until it's tight. And now I've created a toggle with that stake that's going to hold that taut. Just like that. Once I have this completed, all I need to do now is stake the back corners out using my loops exactly as I did the first time we staked this shelter out and using two of my stakes. And with this I have created a very simple lean-to type structure. Convective breezes can blow through. I can put my fire out as far as I need to if I don't want heat reflecting off of this. I can flip it over if all I'm looking for is shade. But again, this orange signaling device gives me a big advantage. Once I've got my shelter set up, I need to enhance this as a signaling device. I can do that with my duct tape, which is also one of the tendencies of survivability. We'll put three black X's, at least a foot long, on the back of this shelter to be a visual signal from above. Three X's means no longer can proceed, need help. Okay, now that we have three X's on the back of our shelter, we have a nice big five foot by seven foot visual signal to the air, giving contrast to the ground that we can no longer proceed and we need help. 